Well, a few months ago, I launched a video on my home labbing applications. And I actually had one person in the comments that was like, eh, you didn't talk about any hardware and this is a home labbing uh, video. Well, it's literally in the title. It says my home labbing applications. So I don't know now, nah, bro, you bring up a good point. I realized that I never really talked to you guys about how I have my home lab physically set up. So today what I'm gonna do is walk through a couple different diagrams and explain to you things like VLANs and also show you how I physically have it all wired together. Then at the end, because I know you guys are all here for that great hardware corn, if you will, and I will put you on the GoPro. You'll have to excuse some of the quality, but I'm gonna show you what all I have and what we're going over in these diagrams, which is located right here behind me in this little box. So I think it makes most sense to start here when we start talking about LANs, VLANs, and firewall rules. Now this right here would be considered my LAN, but I've broken it up by the use of VLANs. Now VLANs really give you the ability to set up separate networks with their own subnet masks inside of your main LAN. And this is gonna break it up and give you silos so that your devices that are connected to each one of these LANs or access points, well, they may or may not be able to talk to the other VLANs. And we control that by use of firewall rules. So in order to create a VLAN, you need to make sure that you have a router that's able to do that. For me, I build my own routers and I use something called PF Sense. But there's tons of different manufacturers that make routers and you really wanna make sure if you're trying to do this, it has the ability to set up VLANs. So you would set them up in terms of your router. Then if you're using a managed switch, you would then assign each one of those switch ports to connect and create these VLANs. So with different subnet masks, now all of a sudden you can use your firewall rules to create traffic rules in order to prevent it or enable it to see other machines and services on other VLANs inside of your LAN. Now, hopefully that made sense and we're gonna walk through it really quickly in terms of how I have mine set up. In terms of those traffic rules, we have green. That simply means it can get to those VLANs, see the devices on it, interact with any of the resources that are on it. We have a broken red, which means it can't see or get to those other VLANs or the devices on those other VLANs. And then we have limited traffic, which simply means, for example, I have a guest network set up on VLAN 3. Now, this is a separate access point, Wi-Fi access point. I have an access point here. I have an access point here. I keep all my guests on this, like people who come visit. I also have all my IoT devices on it, and I also have my TVs on it. Well, I, I do give it the ability to talk to my other VLAN, which has all my Raspberry Pis, which host all of my applications. And in this case, I've got TVs with the Plex application on it, and it's connected to my local Plex server, which is over here on VLAN 4. So I'm using a firewall rule to allow the TVs to connect to my server on VLAN 4. This way, they're connecting only to one of the Raspberry Pis that are on VLAN 4, and to only one of its ports that has Plex on it. Very similar, the server needs to grab its data. Now, the data it's grabbing is actually on VLAN 1, which is my main VLAN. And it's going and connecting to one port, one of my NASs, that only has my media on it so that it can then serve it back to the Plex server and then it's going to then push it to the client devices. So understand that this limited connectivity, this is probably where my risk points are and where my watch points are because I, I would, in a perfect world, you're not allowing any, things, any of these things to talk, but you have to in some cases, but by using VLANs, you can silo that and limit it. Instead of just giving this, you know, carp launch and all these things can talk to each other like you do on a LAN, for example, if you don't set this system up, you know, everything can see everything, everything can get to everything, which is a huge exposure and a huge security risk. So let's walk through this. I've got my internet coming in. This is my main area that I'm trying to protect with a lot of my data on it. Now my VLAN, it can pretty much, VLAN 1 can go anywhere at once. This is my main control center. I, it can go anywhere, but not much can get back beyond one Raspberry Pi on VLAN 4. I don't even let my connected devices on VLAN 2, which is my Wi-Fi, which I only have my personal laptops on and devices I've built that I trust. It doesn't even go back to my VLAN 1. 
Now, if I want to get to something on my NAS, for, unfortunately, because of that rule, I can't get to it, but I'm okay with that because I want to limit the exposure and I don't really need to because I can still get to a Plex application and then the Plex application is pulling from here. So there is no direct line here. So it's kind of going roundabout way and I can still get to what I want, but instead of opening up this and this whole network to this, this port or to this one NAS, I'm just keeping it contained down here so I don't have two connections. So if I'm on a VLAN 2 and on my Wi-Fi, I can get to my Raspberry Pis and my VLANs, I can get to VLAN 3, so on and so forth. But if I'm on my guest network, I can't get back to my Wi-Fi that has all my devices on it. I can't get to um, my ETH0, which is the main data I'm trying to protect. But I can get out to things like my cameras and get out to my Bluetooth mesh. And again, just that one port over here I can get to. Now, this is really important because I've got my IoT devices, my camera, and a home assistant Raspberry Pi on here. It's got its own subnet mask, right? So its own rules. And I understand this is a very sketchy network because it's got a lot of devices that I don't control the firmware on. You know, things I've bought over the years, like Wi-Fi plugs, things like that that are notoriously sketchy, have backdoors on it, and cameras. So I like to keep these really, really isolated and don't give it much path back to a lot of my important data so that they aren't aware of any of these other networks. Now the thing about this is I have that home assistant set up. It's on a Raspberry Pi, but it's creating a Bluetooth mesh. I'm quickly moving a lot of my IoT devices and creating my own out of ESP32s. I'll do a video on that. This is gonna have my sensors and stuff. It's on a Bluetooth mesh. The reason it's important there is it doesn't talk to the greater internet and I can control the footprint of that. So with Wi-Fi, this might broadcast maybe, you know, two, three blocks away and someone that was malicious might easily be able to sniff these packets so instead of that for my iot sensors what i what i've done is although bluetooth's left less secure i have really created a bunch of relays because esp32 allows you to not only have a sensor on board but to actually make it into a mesh so it's going to be a relay to another one and this way i can create a very small bunch of little nodes that I know that the Bluetooth footprint itself doesn't go much beyond my, you know, my front of my house and my back of my house, the sides of my house. So you literally have to be inside of my house to control these things. So this is something I'm working on right now and I'm starting to move a lot of the stuff over. But I wanted you guys to understand that this is kind of a its own land as well. Um, but it, but again, it's just more of a, a different technology and using Bluetooth over something like Wi-Fi or Ethernet. So this is how it all works. Let's talk about how it's all laid out. All right, now that you understand the concept of VLANs and the theory of how I have things set up, I want to show you some of the devices that I'm using in my network so that you can understand how I have it set up physically. Now, the first thing you'll notice here is the internet that comes in via a modem, and then it's going to go to my router. Now, my routers I build myself. I use these little N100 NIC boxes. You can get them on AliExpress. I do wipe the software because similar to things over on this side of things with cameras and IoT devices, oftentimes they'll have their own firmware and stuff. I don't like that. So what I did was these ship with Windows on it, completely wipe it out, and then I throw on PFSense. Now PFSense is an open source firewall and router software, highly suggest it. This is what is kind of makes everything work for me. Gives me the ability to set up these VLANs and a lot of these rules via the built-in firewall rule that we just went over. Now this N100 box is probably overkill, but I do like them and I keep two of them on hand. They're not expensive. I typically pick them up on sale for about 150 bucks. They are quiet. They don't have any fans. They are fanless. Now you could go with something, you know, much less expensive in terms of chipset. Uh, but I do think the N100 is a pretty awesome uh, chip and it's pretty efficient as well. So it does really nicely. And as I mentioned, this has four different NIC ports on it. So that sets itself up for making a custom router. And again, a lot of this information will be linked down below if you're interested. So how this all works is the internet comes in, I'll set up my VLANs and my firewall rules. That is then connected to my managed switch. I'm using a Unify PoE 16 port. Uh, only eight of those ports are uh, power over internet or PoE, but it is a managed switch. You want to make sure of this because the way this works is you set up your VLAN, then you tag those VLANs on those ports. And that's physically not going to allow certain traffic on these ports, but will allow other types of traffic. So this is kind of works in conjunction with the PFSense. And to illustrate this, my VLAN 2, which is that personal Wi-Fi that I put all my devices on, it is going to be on one of those ports that I've assigned inside the port to connect to VLAN 2. And that's going to have the rules over here that I've made inside PFSense. It's physically connected to this port. I assign it on the managed switch. 
And now all of a sudden I have a VLAN with my access point. Now this access point is another Unify access point that I just use in my office. Uh, and it works really nicely just because Unify and Unify play pretty well together. Now on the other side of things, I have another access point set up. That is actually something I got off Amazon. It's one of my older mesh networks. It's an Aeros network. That's plugged into another point port on this managed switch, which is assigned to another VLAN that we went over. And again, this is my guest network and all my IoT devices, as well as my ESP32 Bluetooth network. And then have another port assigned to all of my Raspberry Pis that are hardwired into different uh, ports, right? So each one of these ports are assigned to you know, VLAN 4, for example. So VLAN 4 for this Raspberry Pi wired into this port. VLAN 4 assigned to this port wired into the next port. So these ports, even though they're multiples, you can still assign them to the same VLAN. And this is where the bulk of everything happens. They're all Raspberry Pis. Again, they do have small fans on them. I, I very rarely hear them spin up. They stay pretty cool because I'm not accessing these a whole lot. These have things like Plex on them, has all of um, my applications that I use a lot. If you're interested, I did a video on that as well. You can check it down below. Uh, was the one I was talking about that a lot of people gave me heat because I didn't go over I mean, this kind of stuff. So here it is. So then I have my main network VLAN one that's wired in as well. And the only thing I didn't mention is I also have a Proxmox box. And that's something I built, just a um, computer that I built that has an AMD 9 on it, has 128 gigab gigabytes of RAM. The reason for that is because I'm spinning up VMs. Uh, has a pretty good, I think it's like 16 threads on this at least, and um, a lot of hard drives in here. So it actually functions kind of as a NAS as well because one of these VMs I spun up NAS software. This has about 40 terabytes of hard drive space in it, so I use it that way. And then of course my other NAS is my personal machines. Over here, we, I failed to mention, you know, all this is my main core network for my home lab. They all run on Docker, did a video on that down below as well. So if you're interested, hopefully this gives you an idea, um, you know, now that you understand the VLANs and now that you understand how they physically are set up. So VLAN two, Wi-Fi, VLAN three, Wi-Fi, VLAN four, all my Raspberry Pis, VLAN one, has my regular home computer, my personal computer, my NAS is on it. Um, and then of course over here, which is really interesting is this ESP32 gateway. Now this is something I'm moving to, as I mentioned, and something I'm building out currently. So um, I'll probably do a video on this as well. I think this is extremely useful. Uh, just limiting your physical footprint. I, I can't tell you how powerful that is. So with that, I'm gonna quickly put you on the GoPro. It won't be great camera work, but I wanna show you what I have set up. All right, now I got you on the handheld walking in my office. I'll try to visually explain this and show you how I have it all set up. So first and foremost, you'll see this. This is a server rack. It's called a Tigital. Again, all these things will be linked in the description down below if you're interested. But this is a really nice rack. I did end up uh, just cutting out some plywood, putting some lacquer on top of it, drilling some holes there if I ever put van fans on the top of it to suck the air out. Uh, so I did do that modification, but pretty impressed with this uh, little server case. Back here are my NAS boxes. If you haven't seen my video, I built this one out. This is the Jones bow. So that's a, an example of a NAS. This is another NAS that I built out. This one I actually purchased. It's pretty slick. Um, there, there's some mixed reviews on it. I forget the name of it, but there's like an AMD5 in there. Hard drive stack like this on it. So instead of horizontal, they're vertical. So that's a pretty neat piece. This one's really quiet, so I keep that one all the time. This one's got a lot more drives in it. So if I come down here and pull this off, you'll actually see how the drives are lined up in there. And this one is a bit uh, loud. So I typically only turn this on, you know, uh, uh, maybe once a week and do what I need to do with uh, moving data around so I can have backup. So this would be an example of being on my main uh, VLAN one because these are all ethernet into uh, all my equipment and into my switch that I have in here. And the same thing with this is just a Raspberry Pi that's going to be on there. Back there's my main PC and gaming machine. That'll all be on that VLAN one. So if I come in here into the server rack, we will start down below here. This is that Proxmox box. And again, that is on VLAN one. We have all my Raspberry Pis, VLAN four. And again, this is the one that has Plex on it. You can see it's labeled here. This is just a power rack that can turn on and off. But most of these are actually powered by PO, uh, power over Ethernet. And they just have hats on top of them. I also have a video uh, about that as well, what I'm using there. This is just a patch panel. And this is backwards, but 
This would be that um, Unify switch, POE switch, link in the description. And then way in the back here, you can kind of see it. This is one of those N100 boxes uh, that I build out for my router. So router, switch, and then I have my Raspberry Pis. Now this is a new rack I added. It will be just like this one. And this is where I actually have my instance of Home Assistant. So this is on VLAN 4, but this will be on that VLAN 3 because it's connecting via Wi-Fi. So it's not, it doesn't have any ethernet connection. It is Wi-Fi to my guest network. And then this way I can sp spin off my uh, ESP32 Bluetooth off of that as well. So this one's connecting via Wi-Fi. Everything else in this case is hard wired. A little messy, but let's show you. You can get to it in the back really quickly. And let me undo this. And I'll just show you this way. You can see the a little bit more uh, right here is that uh, Unify switch, right? So you can see where all my switching is happening back there. Of course, these are my Raspberry Pis. I wanted to show you this because it really does have some nice side access here, but also just so you can see that switch again. Now, in terms of those VLANs, of course, you've got the Ethernet being VLAN one with my desktop and stuff like that. And then up here, my guest network VLAN three is off of these arrows. So this is wired into the switch, set up as VLAN three, and then also set up as my guest network. Over to the right here, this is, I think it's a UV Pro something, it'll be leaked in the description, but it's a Unify as well. And this is my main network that I connect all my devices to that, you know, that I either build or that I trust that has my own firmware on there. So this would be an example of my VLAN two. And of course, at my VLAN 2, you know, that might have something like over here, which I've just put Linux on this uh, older MacBook. And this is, would be an example of something I trust. It's, it's Apple and uh, it has Linux on it, so I trust it even more. Well, there it is. I gave you some of that good old hardware corn, and hopefully all those diagrams made sense. And if you learned something, I would really appreciate if you liked and subscribed. That helps me out a whole bunch. If you have any questions, feel free to leave anything in the comments. And of course, all the products and stuff that I spoke about will be linked down below. They are affiliate links in some cases. It does help out the channel quite a bit. So I appreciate if you use them. Don't feel obligated. I'm not putting a hard press on you. I'm just saying they don't pay us creators that much. And if you appreciate my content, it's a great way for free to help me out. Anyways, my name's Hill Phantom. I'll see you next time.